YouTube, what the crap's going on, Heir of Carthage here? Back in Total War Rome 2, and this is going to be a finals match from a tournament, which I believe was like Master of Carthage or something like that. I like the name. I like the name very, very well. All right, let's check it out. It's going to be uh, Macedon versus Carthage. And let's take a look at the, whoa, Noble Cavalry for Carthage. Interesting build. <laughs> let's go ahead and say that right off the bat. So let's see. See what we got here for a Macedon build. It looks like a combination of Thorax Swords and Shield Bearers down the front line with the Militia Hoplite on either flank. I see four Thessalian Cavalry and another Militia Hoplite in the back. There's a couple of Mercenary Thracian Warriors which make great charge units to go through the Hoplites um, and deliver some charge. And then there's a few Mercenary Thracian Peltist, which are a interesting... Um, Peltist unit, uh, maybe a little bit on the light side of armor, but heavy javelin damage, and then pretty decent melee stats uh, once they get into uh, combat. And then for Carthage, um, it looks like there are some late Libyans on either flank and one in the s two in the center. My bad. I see a Libyan infantry on the far flank, and then let's see a mercenary Samnite, two of those, and then another mercenary Libyan. There's three noble cavalry for Carthage, and four if you count the general. And then there's one mercenary Scutari cab, which is a very odd build for Carthage. And then they're depending on Libyan Peltist for their um, their skirmishing force. So, should be interesting. Let's check this out and see what happens. So, I would think Macedon has probably a decent infantry advantage with the three shield bearers. And cavalry, I would say, would favor Macedon normally, but the addition of the heavy shot cavalry here by Carthage, um, although noble cavalry is not very good, I mean, if we take a look, like this is a very expensive unit. I believe it's over a thousand denarii. Um, so you got what 37, 25, 63 charge bonus, 40, 25, 67 charge bonus, and Thessalians are considerably cheaper. Thessalians are heavy shot cavalry. The only difference here is you have very heavy shot cavalry. So better mass for the Carthaginians. 100 health. So slightly better health. Base morale is the same. And then armor is only 40 for the Thessalians, whereas it's 60 for the noble cavalry. So the nobles are a little bit tankier, quite a bit more expensive, but um, they uh, punch at a little bit higher mass as well. So see how this plays out. And I'll let you see the players afterwards. They'll be listed on the uh, the uh, closing screen for the battle. Got some militia hoplites pushing forward here, supported by a Thessalian cavalry who are looking to break into... Nope, they're going to back up. So the Libyans are just going to take this charge from the militia hoplites. No, they're going to swap out with some Libyan infantry. They were basically shielding from this Thessalian cavalry, I believe. And we have two noble cavalry for Carthage moving around. The militia hoplites are going to go into a shield wall, as are the Libyan infantry. And then the charges from the Thessalians are going to begin. These thin ranks are going to be used by the Thessalian cavalry to try and get some charge work done, but it's not going to work out great. Shield bearer coming into Libyans. It will take that a while to finish. The biggest worry here, I think, is that the Macedonian has these Thracian warriors to work with. We'll see how that works. So far, we got some Libyan Peltists unloading on these uh, Thorax Swords up front, but it's probably not going to cause a lot of damage. They're spread pretty thin. I mean, it'll do some health damage that won't it won't hurt once the combat begins. Some mercenary Samnites joining this fight, and the Carthaginian Noble Cavalry gets around the flank into the Thessalians. But there's two Thessalian Cavalry there. The Carthaginians can certainly use some backup. That Noble Cavalry is getting cut up pretty quickly. The Thracian Peltists are actually going to be decent in melee, and then it looks like the mercenary Thracian Warriors may be trying to do some work back there. They have a bonus versus large also. So here's the uh, Sam Knights up close, very cool looking units. You can see some of the Thracian Warriors there. The Carthaginian Noble Cavalry looked like it was trying to get some work done there. Or no, no, that was the Thessalians we saw. The Noble Cavalry, so there's another, it looks like the Carthaginians probably lost one Noble Cavalry back here. But then there's another that came over for support from the center. And Carthage takes an early lead here in terms of getting rid of a Thracian warrior, a Militia Hoplite. I say an early lead. I don't know. The Shield Bearer is still in good shape and has 93 kills. It was absolutely pummeling. Mercenary Samnite Warrior should hold out fairly strong here. And 
I wonder if we're going to see a... Yeah, we're going to see a flank charge into these uh, Thracian warriors, but there's a lot of Peltas nearby, and the Noble Cavalry is going to take a beating here. There's Militia Hoplites here, and there is a Shield Bearer following up the, uh, the Noble Cavalry. But then the, uh, the Shield Bearers look like they're going to be hit in the back. But, I mean, this Noble Cavalry from Carthage just gets absolutely shredded. It did get about 70 kills before it went. You'll have to hope that was worth it. But now there's a Macedonian Shield Bearer free on this flank. And you can see that the Libyan Infantry don't really want to fight it. Pretty understandable there. And there's some Thracian warriors that are pushing back now that there's uh, no cavalry support here. So this is definitely kind of like a, an interesting engagement the way it's rolling out here. Both players taking their time and not trying not to overcommit to any one point and create a loss scenario. Now these Samnite warriors probably are lost. They're caught behind enemy lines. And these, uh, they're going to be hit in the flank by these Thracian warriors in some pretty sweet looking combat. Militia Hapote is going to hold the line here against some Libyans. And the uh, Javelin men, or the Peltas rather, coming forward and trying to put some damage down on the mercenary uh, Thracians, which are a pretty vulnerable target to this type of thing. Scutari Cav interrupting a Thorax Swords charge. And that's going to be pushed back by a Thracian warrior. And on this flank, you still have a Carthaginian Noble Cavalry holding, but there's two Thessalians that could overpower it unless infantry support comes in. And it looks like now we're going to commit some Libyans to this fight, though there are some regrouped Thracians out here that could potentially land a devastating charge. The Shield Bearers have 107 kills with still 105 men remaining, and they are going to do quite well versus Libyan infantry. It looks like some Samnite Warriors may join, and here a nice charge into the back of the Samnite Warriors with the Thessalian Cavalry. The Thracian Peltas doing some uh, baiting here in the center, trying to pull the late Libyans forward potentially. These three Thracian Peltas, I wonder if they could actually beat this late Libyan. It's the Scutari cap that they may be worried about. So over here, some shield bearers beating down a late, Lib late Libyan. And then the mercenary Samnite warriors engaging a Thorax sword. The Samnite warriors should be able to defeat the Thorax sword. Here, there's some uh, mercenary Thracians mixed up with the Carth uh, Carthaginian general. There's also militia Hoplites being thrown into this fight. So this is, this is actually kind of a desperate fight over here for Carthage, I think. And there's even more Thessalian cavalry thrown in, so the Carthaginian general at this point is probably as good as dead. I think things look good here for Macedon, in my opinion. Their shield bearers are just going to be winning the day here. Carthage doesn't seem to have a great answer to him. Look at that, 161 kills, still half the unit remaining. Let's see if Carthage can get a break on this flank, and they desperately need one. These shield bearers are just going to hack their way through. Look at that. Mercenary Samnite warriors trying to take them on. Only one loss for 71 kills on that shield bear. Their armor is just so high. Here the uh, noble cavalry put a charge in, but now it's trying to pull away from the uh, mercenary peltist because there's Thracian cavalry inbound to support. But uh, those peltists are going to be able to put down a javelin hailstorm on this uh, heavy cavalry. Looks like they're going to turn around, though, and go for another charge. They get a decent charge, but Javelins shred cavalry in a big hurry on this game. But this Noble Cavalry has racked up 140-ish kills. Some good work. I just don't see how Carthage has the infantry power to pull this off. And they don't have the cavalry anymore either to provide the hammer and anvil support. At least I don't think they will. After this fight ends here, I'm pretty sure the Noble Cavalry, despite a pretty solid performance here, will be gone. And these Carthaginian infantry are now set up for rear charges. The Thessalians coming into the back of these Peltists. So, I think Carthage is in some pretty serious trouble here. There are a couple of fairly healthy mercenary Samnite warriors, but I see one... Uh, one shield bearer there, and another shield bearer on this flank, albeit it is pretty depleted. But this fairly healthy shield bearer right here should be a concern. Look at that. 101 kills for only 9 losses. These guys are absurd. They're really good in the right situations. Um, and against Carthage, I think that shield bearers are a pretty solid pick. Noble fighters would be about, mercenary noble fighters would probably be Carthage's best answer to a shield bear in terms of infantry. 
Yeah, even here where these Libyans could hold out for a long time against Militia Hoplites, they're going to get hit in the back by Thessalians. And they're not going to like that one bit. They don't have the morale for that type of fight. These mercenary Thracian Peltas late in the game like this, they have a few javelins left, going to be very handy, but they're also going to be decent in melee. Whereas the Libyan Peltas not as good in melee. You can see there that's uh, 28 attack and 24 weapon damage. If you look at the Thracian Peltas, 30 attack, 35 damage. So quite a bit better, um, though the Thracians do have less armor, I believe. Yeah, they come in at a uh, 30 armor instead of 65 which, so a lot higher armor for the uh, Peltist, or the, uh, the Libyan Peltist. It's going to be interesting, so 90 shield bears there, a thorax sword, 33 more shield bears, but this mercenary Samnite warrior is falling apart. It got 152 kills, so a solid performance. But yeah, that's going to be a costly victory for Macedon. Let's take a look at the players here. So that was indeed uh, S.H. Moore playing as Macedon, and he played well. And then uh, Panda Warrior, who is definitely no slouch of a player on the other side, so pulling out a victory over Panda Warrior has got to make you feel good at any time. He is a fantastic Rome 2 player, and he played good on some other Total War games. He's a fantastic all-around Total War player. So there you go, the, the uh, match between Panda Warrior and uh, S.H. Moore. Um, hope you all enjoyed that one. This is one of the matches in the finals of that tournament. I have another match I can show um, at some point, uh, but figured you all would enjoy this one. I know I did. I like seeing the Carthage Macedon matchup, but um, Macedon does hold some interesting edges in this matchup if I think they're played right. So the Thracian Warriors are a nice unit to have. They have some anti large and they have a really high charge, which makes them very handy in supporting an infantry fight. And then Shield Bearers provide like a tanky, high armored infantry unit that against anything less than say like a mercenary noble fighter or something they can provide a whole lot of value now you can see the samnite warriors provide some serious value too if they get a chance like these guys here got a lot of kills and that's just such a huge pick of noble cavalry i've never seen carthage do something like that i kind of understand it because the medium melee cavalry that carthage normally feel that's fields struggles versus the thessalians as well but it's a very expensive pick too I believe if I go into the custom battle and take a look at Carthage just to help myself remember because it's been so long since I've been in this game. Do you all remember when Campanian Cavalry was like really good in the game for a little while? Yeah, it was a cool unit. It can still be used to decent effect occasionally. Um, but yeah, so the, the Carthaginian player was relying on that noble cavalry right here at 10, uh, 1020. And you can see here the price difference in the Carthaginian Cavalry could have potentially allowed for more support units but then again i'm i'm double guessing panda warriors pick and he knows way more about this game than me so i would probably be wrong in determining the pick so he had something i think i saw four of these guys in the battlefield i know he had a noble general see that still leaves some some extra funds here without the uh, noble cavalry of course you could bring scutari cavalry which i think um fare just a little bit better in terms of attack stats albeit a little bit less armor they have slightly more health so maybe a better idea to let's see so that's what it would have looked like if he had brought the cheaper cavalry but he would have had to support them a lot more the noble cavalry i think were intended to be more of an answer to the thessalians but i'm not even sure really who wins that fight head to head Definitely the way if uh, Panda Warrior wanted to win was just to spam Snake Pot Ballistas. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously. <laughs> Such a weird unit that got thrown in there. Hope you all enjoyed this. Air of Carthage signing out of Rome 2 for now. Appreciate MSI support, or, uh, yeah, sponsoring my channel. Appreciate you, my awesome viewers, being here every time. If you want to subscribe, please click that logo in the bottom right-hand corner, and you will be the first to know when there is new content. You're fantastic. I love making this stuff for you, and I will see you back soon with some more Total War Rome 2 action.